Alrighty. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Today is June the 25th, 2020. Title for today's teaching is Why Choose to Be a Victim. Now, we're going to be uh, in a few different places, maybe, in the Bible. You know how it goes. Uh, sometimes... We can hit more than one verse. Sometimes we don't quite make it even through one verse. So, um, what a great discussion that we had um, to be able to get me to this point, to be able to bring this teaching to you. Uh, it was uh, really highlighted to me just uh, uh, this past weekend uh, about uh, being um, a victim and what that looks like and What's the result in, in life because of that? And one of the things I had put down was, uh, you cannot win and be a victim. That's You just you can't do that, right? And then those in life that choose not to live as victims win. And then... These people that choose to win, right? They don't choose to be a victim, so they win. Those people are the ones who victims really hate the most. Right? So if if you pick life, right? If you pick not to be a victim. If I'm living in that world of victimhood. If I'm if I'm living in that world of it's your fault and now I had something going on in my life and it was your fault that it was bad um even if it wasn't right I'm going to have a much harder time in life. Uh one of the definitions, um, my own personal definition of how we as a society are using the word victim is uh, a negative outcome for me, for them. So if I have or what I perceive to have is a negative outcome, well, then I'm the victim. I can rightfully... I can rightfully act as a victim. My question, right, the title of this one is, Why Choose? Why Choose to Be a Victim? And you could say, you know, that's kind of, those are like fighting words. You know, you, you're going to stand up and you're going to really oppose the other person and you're going to come out and win. And so, you know, somebody who, the weaker one is the one that's going to lose and so they're going to be a victim. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not why would you choose to be a victim. Because you can have a, a situation happen... And you can come out on the short end of that. That doesn't mean you're a victim. Okay? If we get into this, we'll we'll just see where this this all goes. Okay. First uh, the first verses that we're gonna go into is in first John chapter five. Towards the end of the Bible. Just a, a few pages, if that. Uh, so it's like the number one and then John. First John. And then there's a second and there's a third, right? So First John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. If we just stop right there, you can't win and be a victim. You can say, well, sure, I can be a victim, but I won't let that stop me from winning. 
I think we have a different definition then. Because the victim is a loser. You just had some situations that happened and you were able to get beyond them and still become, still be victorious. This verse is, uh, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So now if you have overcome the world, there is no victimhood that you can claim. All right, let's, let's go on. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. So again, if we know of somebody who is acting as the victim, who believes they are a victim, who uh, wants to be treated as the victim, for them, they don't understand, they don't believe their faith is not in the fact that they are victorious and have overcome the world. Their faith has, right? And then verse 5, it says, Who is the one who overcomes the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So the things that we've been talking about, right? That foundation of who he is, um, what he's done, that we stand on that belief and then we can get in to the greater and the better things because of that belief. So why choose to be a victim? You can say, well, Todd, I was walking down the street and I got beat up. I was the victim of an assault. Why would you have to label it as being a victim? Because once you label it as being a victim, you give that situation more power, more control over your life. Because now, once you've named it, now everything that is brought to mind... Everything that is connected with that name now is associated with that action, that, that circumstance. And it's a whole lot, whole lot harder to overcome that when you do that. I was the victim of whatever. Well... That's not part of your identity. So now if you say that you're a victim, well, now you're, 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 not, you're not agreeing with who God says you are. Now it's up to you to be able to get past that. You say, well, I already know who I am because of what God says about me, but I'm also a victim because all these bad things happen to me. So that makes me a victim of this kind of abuse, of that kind of treatment, of I am a victim. So then I would say, all right, let's pause for a minute. And let's, how about you look at why you are fighting so hard to hold on to that identity of being a victim. You say, well, if I'm a victim, that means that I am no longer responsible for whatever happens as a result of that. <clears throat> and there's some logical thinking with that. This bad thing happened to me, and I'm a victim, and because of that, I've done this bad same this same bad thing and it's because I was a victim with this. So then that almost justifies you know you you sometimes you can justify this and 
really, if you really want to get past, right, you could, you could say, you know, I was a victim of whatever and something horrible. And in some treatments, what they'll do is they'll say, no, um, you need to start thinking, you need to start believing that you're not a victim, but you're a survivor. You're a survivor of whatever. Okay. Heading in the right direction. But again, you're labeling that situation, that, that thing that happened. And once you name it, you give it more authority, more power in your life. It takes away a huge potential of taking away from your identity in who God says you are. Because God doesn't say that you're a victim. He doesn't say that you're a survivor from that standpoint of, I barely made it. I've just survived. I'm not thriving, but I barely, I, I'm surviving. Okay, it's not what he says. He says that it gives you an abundant life. And that's where peace and love and joy, all this good stuff happens. Again, let's just victim. More than likely, in some areas of your life, you believe you are a victim. If we look at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 56 and 57, it says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Okay. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, now we have this victory. You cannot have victory and be a victim. You don't have a negative outcome if you're a victor. A victor means you've won. Right? In uh, baseball, I could, I could say, oh, my team was the, was the, right? We lost. We were the victim of a better pitching, right? We were the victim of a better team. Again, it's a negative, right? The negative outcome is attached to being a victim. It says, no, we're given. We are given. Here you go. You are given victory. For those who are in Christ. So if you're living this, right? So you can you could say, all right, I kind of am starting to get this. If I take on the identity of being a victim, then uh, I'm actually looking for success. I'm looking for improvement in my life uh, by the way of somebody else. I need to have this person um, tell me um, that um, what they did was wrong. I need that person to do something in my life. And you hear how close that is to what Christ has done for us? Right? I'm holding you accountable for something that you did against me. And now I'm the victim of you. So now I'm waiting for you to repent, for you to come to me and ask for forgiveness, which I probably won't give you. 
I'm waiting for because I'm a victim. Well, you'll never get out of that. You could you some people can be a victim and then work their 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 way out of it. Other people that becomes their identity. And then you never can get out of that because that's part of who you are and if you get out of who you are, well then you won't know who you are and so you stay there. It's just really messed up. And it's just not a way to live because you're so much better than that. You're so much more than that. You are not defined by the things that have happened to you. Or the things that have happened by you. But um, if we're looking at just from the standpoint of being a victim, that then becomes defining who you are. It's like, no, no. You are so much more than that. And when you start to see this, then in your life it starts uh, to be, um, you start to, uh, to see changes. Right? Now you're interacting with other people and that interaction is different because before you would interact with them and you would say, well, I'm a victim, so I'm going to act out against them because I have a right to because I'm a victim. And then you make them a victim and or they're acting as a victim and you're like, you need to just suck it up and stop whining and you need to be stronger than that and you're not a victim and you're just acting as one and stop being so dramatic and you just love drama in your life, don't you? And just all of the all of the stuff, right? Once you can grab on to this, once you start believing that the word victim and I really think that a good definition, if somebody else has a better definition, let me know. But I think nowadays, the definition that is used to be a victim is a negative outcome. If I'm going to, if I get a negative outcome, or if I think I might, could have, well, I can, I can claim to be a victim doesn't matter if it happened to me today or to my great great grandpa I can still claim to be a victim it's just it's 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 really sad because they don't understand that once you get into that trap it's a whole lot harder to get out of it there's one place uh, and I didn't mark it down it's in I think it's in Acts that um, victims is used and that greek word that's used there that we've defined as victims it's only used in that one place and the definition is that which is destined for slaughter so you get in your feelings hurt um, definitely doesn't fall into one who is destined for slaughter. Although it can, and we can go that direction, but we're not going to because that, that'd be a whole different conversation. <clears throat> that which is destined for slaughter. So now, when you don't see yourself as a victim anymore, now you can start interacting with other people in a different way. They can be doing something bad to somebody else. They can be doing something bad to you. And instead of lashing out like a, a cornered dog or one that's been beat or whatever, right, eventually, more than likely, they're going to attack. Um, instead of having that response... Here's something, uh, Acts 7, Stephen, or Stephen, I've heard him called both, I'm not, I'm not sure, to me it really doesn't matter. Um, he, 
Um, so in the book of Acts, one of the ways that they punished people is they threw rocks at them until they died. Crowd would gather around, the sentence would be per, um, pronounced, and the rock throwing would be started. And so this is happening to Stephen, to Stephen. And he's getting hit by these rocks. And the last thing that he says, now keep in mind this whole victim mentality, this whole am I a victor or a victim? And being a victor doesn't mean that you're lording it over somebody else. It doesn't mean that you won and they lost. We have victory, and it's not because we've battled anybody or anything. It's our belief that Christ did what needed to be done took the consequences, took the punishment for the sin, for our shortcomings. He took that punishment for our wrongdoing. He took that. And because of that, now we get to have victory. We no longer need to look at ourselves as victims of whatever. And so Stephen, Stephen, We'll say Stephen. He has this understanding. And so um, he's been pronounced guilty and they're stoning him, right? They're throwing rocks at him. And the last thing that he says, right? It's in Acts 7, verse 60. It says, Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Okay, Because once, once you become a born-again believer, you're living your eternal life. So that death that we would define as death, um, the Bible defines it, it they, they, they name it as falling asleep instead of death. Again, another, uh, another subject for another time, we'll say. That is somebody who doesn't live with this victim mentality. He is living in this righteous, in this victorious, believing this victorious mentality. And it's not, <laughs> hey man, I'm just saying, take me a long time to grow this, this much hair on my face, but it is what it is. Maybe I'll shave it, go back to, to clean shaving after all of the crazy mask wear and stuff is over. But you're a blessing, sir. Your heart is bigger than you are, Kevin. The care that you have for other people is immense. The, the love that you show those who God has put in your life is a huge blessing for them. That, that the, the direction that you take relationships in that connection of helping them to see, to believe that they are even a better person than they think they might actually be. You just speak life into them. 
You speak hope into them. You bring out who God says they are in them. What a blessing. I know I'm encouraged and blessed to know you, to be able to call you friend, call you brother. I'm blessed. All right, better get back to it. So Stefan is saying, I understand I'm not a victim. I understand that I could call myself a victim because they're throwing rocks at me to kill me. This is their objective. I could say I'm a victim. And yet, he says, I'm not going there. I'm not going to give that word, I'm not going to give that name any power or authority in my life. Is this happening to me? Absolutely. I'm not burying my head in the sand. I'm not denying that this is happening. I understand that it's happening. But, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Man, super powerful. And that's where you can get when you don't look at your life as your in yourself as being the victim of something or someone. All it is is something that happened. That's it. It's something that happened. Once you label it, now you've given it power and authority and you have put so much more into that thing that happened, that situation, whether it's good or bad. You've changed it now because now once you name it as something, that name is powerful. Now everything that's connected with that now has become connected with that situation. And that's why if you want to connect anything, if you want to name anything in your life, you say, I'm victorious. I have Right? What does it say in 1 John again? Right? I have overcome the world. If you want to have any words, any names that are connected, think about what does it mean to overcome. You had adversity in your life, and you didn't let that stop you, and you've made it out the other side, right? You've You've overcome that obstacle. You've overcome that hard, hard, hard uh, place in life. You've you have overcome it. Why don't you put that as a name for you rather than victim? I am a uh, victorious person. I have victory, right? Instead of anything else. The chances are, if you're thinking that, um, if you're labeling what has happened to your life um, as you being a victim, I'm the victim of circumstances, whatever, right? If you have that as part of the label for you, you're not going to have peace. There isn't, I, I don't know how you can live as a victim and still feel you have any peace. There isn't, because the two are op opposite. So if you look at John, so now the first verses that we talked about were First John. Now this is just John. So if you go into the New Testament, uh, it's going to start out with Matthew, then Mark, Luke, John. Okay. John chapter 14, verse 27. It says, peace. Now, this is Jesus talking, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were four of the people that walked with Jesus. And then they wrote down, they, they told the, the, 
the stories of what had happened while he was there and they were with him. So that's the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? And so this is Jesus talking. And it says, Peace, I leave you. Peace, I leave with you. That helps a little bit, right? So peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. My peace. So he had some peace. He said, my peace. Because he wasn't a victim. You could say, well, yeah, he could say he was a victim. Look at all the stuff that the Bible says he went through. Well, sure, you could. But he's not a victim. Okay? And he said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So there's two keys. Are you troubled? Well, more than likely, you're thinking you're a victim some way, especially if you use the de definition of a negative outcome. Then you're looking at yourself as a victim. Okay? Do not let your heart be troubled. If your heart is troubled, you don't have peace. Do not let it be fearful. So now if you have fear, your heart's troubled, you're feeling like you are a victim in something or in several things. And it doesn't mean that you have to battle them back. All that it means is believe that Jesus did what he says he's done. He is who he is. Those two things will help. Because once you understand that more, well then that helps you to understand who you are. Because as a born-again believer, you are one with him. That's it. You are in Christ. He is in you. You're like, well, I don't get what that means. Um, I did a teaching on it. So, boy, I have no idea at some point. Um, so you can go on and look. All right, the fact is I am a victim, but I don't accept it or claim it. I choose to accept the peace I prayed for and live in victory. See, so you had something happen to you. You, but a victim is not somebody that's in victory. You just choose victory. You live in victory. You accept this peace. You get to live in victory, even though horrible things have happened. Bad things have happened. Negative things have happened. However you want to put it. Stuff happened. That's what it was. And you got the short end of the stick. Could be defined as, as victim. The world defines it as victim. God says you are not a victim because you're mine. See, there's strength there. There's power there. There's peace there. If you walk as a victim, you're never going to have peace. You're never going to feel empowered. Because even if you try to take back what this person stole from you because you're a victim of them, that's still you doing it, and then you're going to be a victim of whatever else. Hey, Mark, glad you could join. So living as a definition of your identity as a victim is not what God says, who you are. So when we can get that and say, all right, this bad thing happened to me. I used to look at it as me being the victim of whatever. But now I just see it as a situation. It's just something that it's it's something that happened. It was a bad thing that happened. It was whatever. I'm not going to label it 
as that thing came into my life and it was unwanted and it turned me into a victim and then I had to battle myself back to no longer being a victim. No. Because if that's the case, you're going to be a victim again. Because it was by your strength then that you were able to get back. Victim, I've had all, I, personally, I've had all sorts of stuff happen in my life. Not a victim. I choose, like Kevin had said, I choose to live in victory. I say, all right, who does God say I am? Does God ever say that I'm a victim? Nope. Well, then how can I? What right do I have? Right. Once I do, I lose that, that peace. And now I don't have peace and my heart is troubled. Right. I am fearful. Maybe of that situation happening again. Maybe of somebody else doing something, you know, it just, it can really snowball because now you've lost control over at least one aspect of your life. So now I'm a victim of whatever. No, he says that you're not. I want to get to some other verses here and then we'll wrap up because we'll see what, what we got. There's, there's so much and I'm, you know, I'm, we'll see. So, right, so John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. That's the life. If you're looking to, to, to stop being fearful, if you're looking because you, you just you feel troubled, you know that's just part of your life. Here's the way, not a way, the way. To get rid of that in your life. Reject completely, wholeheartedly, 100% reject that you're a victim. And accept and receive that you have overcome, that you are victorious, that, what was another thing? Right, that you've overcome the world that you have victory. You have peace. Here's the last thing. Here's what else. If we go into Romans 8. I think Romans 8 is probably that one chapter is probably one of the best chapters in the whole entire Bible. But. There's a big chunk, but let's just start. So Romans 8, let's go to, um, toward, right at the end of the, the chapter, let's go to verse 35. It says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? And now think about, um, um, is this thinking, what kind of thinking do you have when you have this stuff going on? Is it a victory or is it a victim? Which one do you choose, right? Why choose to be a victim? when you can be a victor, right? It says, will tribulation, if you have tribulation, you get to pick. Do you consider yourself a victim? How about distress? Very easy. If I have distress in my life, I could easily say that I'm a, the victim. How about persecution? Easy again, I can say I'm a victim. He's like, no, no, don't, don't. Don't go there, right? Persecution, right? Famine, nakedness, peril, sword, right? Remember the definition. The one place that talks about victims is that which is destined for slaughter. Okay, that which is destined for slaughter is a victim. Verse 36 says, just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Victim mentality. 
But what does 37 say? But in all these things, all what things? Back up. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. In all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer. Woohoo! Overwhelmingly conquer. You don't just get just by the skin of your teeth. No. Overwhelmingly conquer. By your own efforts? No. It says, through him who loved us. That's how we overwhelmingly conquer. So now if you want to name something, if you want to have a name attached to you, would you rather see yourself as a victim or somebody who has overwhelmingly conquered? That's what it says. Through him, so through Christ, right, who loved us. And I think you could go with God the Father, right? John 3, 16. For he so loved the world that, okay, oh, so good. But in all these things, what things? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. Um, and I'm sure that there's a bunch that we could go into with that. Um, but just understand pretty much all of the, the negative outcomes that you could have in your life. It could be covered in that. Okay. In all of this, in the midst of these things. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And then 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Come on. Hey, Michael. Glad you could join. It says... The stuff you're going through that you understand without a shadow of a doubt makes you a victim. Without a doubt. You have, according to the world, you have the right to claim that name as victim. But in doing so, you bring with it all of those things that are attached to that name. And he says, if you don't look at those things as making you a victim, if you look at those things as just situations, as just something. I'm not going to put a name to it. It's just, it is what it is. If you do that, what that does for you is it brings you into verse 37 that says, but in all these things, right? So you have all these things. We overwhelmingly conquer through him 
And then he says, I'm going to take it one step further. And I'm going to say, I'm convinced. You could say, I have faith. I believe. I think this, I'm convinced, at least nowadays, um, um, has a stronger level of commitment to it than faith or belief. I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. So here is this tie-in for us to be able to say, oh, if I see myself as a victim, then really what I'm doing is I'm rejecting the love that God has for me. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Why would you ever want to reject the love that somebody has for you? The only reason that you would is because you don't think you're good enough for it. You don't think that, that you're worthy of it, so then you can reject it. God says, nope, I love you. Right? For God so loved mankind that his own response to his love was that he sent his only begotten son. And that whoever believes in him shall not perish, right? Shall not die, but will have eternal life. That's where we are. Why would you choose to be a victim? Why would you choose to heap all of that negative on you when the thing that happened was probably bad enough. And instead, you get to live in victory. You get to live, right? First John says that you've overcome the world. So now you're an overcomer, not a victim, you're an overcomer. 1 Corinthians 15 says that God has given us victory. So now you're victorious as well. Acts 7 tells us that when we understand that, then when people do bad things to us, we're not looking at them as victims right Stephen says Lord do not hold this sin against them as they're killing him by throwing rocks at him that's an understanding of I'm not a victim that very few people have right John Jesus here in the book of John is saying Peace, I leave with you. Now, if you don't have peace, maybe Jesus is lying here. Maybe it's a poor interpretation that he didn't really leave his peace with us. Maybe it was only one person that he did that for. Maybe it was only 12 people. Maybe it was only 100 and now his peace has ran out. No, that's all goofy. It is the same as if he was standing right in front of you and he says, my peace I give to you. And understand, I don't give like the world gives. But now you have my peace. So, if you don't have his peace, maybe you're thinking that you're a victim instead of being a victor. And lastly, in Romans, it says that we, during the situation, if we're in it, it says that we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And then he says, not only that, <clears throat> 
there's just nothing that's going to take me out of this. And why would you? Really, really, if you just think about it, I am going to wrap this up. I'm going to, um, I, I am. If you're living in peace and then somebody comes in and tries to make you a victim, now you might react initially that, that way, but it doesn't mean that you're a victim. What it means is you get hit with something and then you go, Oh, woe is me. No, wait a minute. That's not who I am. How goofy is that? Oh, no. I have peace because that's what I've been given. Being a victim does not have peace, so that's not what I'm... I'm, I'm not going there. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have overwhelmingly conquered this thing. I tell you what. You want to get through some some swamp in your life, right? Some, some low land. Go through it with the understanding that you have overwhelmingly conquered it. Man, it'll make a difference. Now when you interact with people, now you can see them better you can see them more like how God sees them. Because what he's done for you, he's done for them also. Even if they don't believe it, you have the choice to speak that into their life or not. And we can get into that another time, too, maybe. Whew. Don't choose to be a victim. Even when something bad happens to you, don't choose to be identified as a victim. Understand that whatever happened was bad. But that doesn't define who you are your response to this bad that's happened to you should be based off of who you are and who you are it says he says that you're an overwhelmingly conqueror that you have overcome that you are victorious that you live in peace that's who you are We could go on for a couple more hours, I'm sure, on this. But we're going to wrap this one up. Hopefully, this has been encouraging for you. Hopefully, you can take this principle and apply it right to your life and be able to live in that peace that you're looking for. Live in that unshakable foundation so then when somebody comes into your life and is pointing that negative finger at you you're not shaken you stand firm because you know who you are and you don't try to retaliate against them why would you ever wish bad on somebody else i believe there's a verse that says the goodness of God leads somebody to change the way that they're thinking. It's not the strictness of God. It's not the wrath of God that leads somebody to do that. It's the goodness of God. And you're his ambassador. Oh, love you too, Kevin. I got to wrap this thing up. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this has been a blessing and an encouragement for you, for everybody. Um, I know you've been a blessing and an encouragement for me, um, all of you that have been able to watch this um, as I do it live, as well as those who watch this uh, after the fact. Uh, thank you. It is wonderful that we get to do this, and I'll be here again next week. Same time, Thursdays at 7 o'clock, 
All right. Bye now.